The box office has been booming since the release of Barbie and Oppenheimer, or Barbenheimer, mid-July, breathing new life into moviegoers. But how does that impact advertising? Well, National Cinemedia is taking a new approach, opting to shift to a programmatic selling structure for movie screen inventory. Tom Lazinski, National Cinemedia CEO, joins us now. So, Tom, talk about this shift here and how we'd actually see it play out in real time when you think of customer data and how it would be then sort of transferred to or sold to third parties and then how moviegoers would actually see this experience. Well, for the consumer itself, it would be fairly transparent. What we've been building is a very large database and probably the largest cinema movie database um, available. And ultimately what every brand wants is they want to know exactly who's in their theater and whether they're targeting the people um, that they're looking for. We're known for reaching 18 to 34 year olds. There's probably no better delivery system in the world for reaching young people in movie theaters today um, compared to television or even in digital. So what we wanted to do was marry that great young demo to a really cinematic experience, 50 foot screen, and then have the data and the ability to do all the attribution studies that our clients want. Um, we've been very fortunate. July was one of the best months in the history of the movie business. The fact that biggest July since 2016. Um, and during that period of time, 125 million people actually were in movie theaters and National Cinema Media being the leader in the space, we've delivered, you know, 70 percent of those. You know, the schedule you have up right now shows an, a really interesting intention study that we did. Um, literally 97 percent of people watch cinema ads, and that compares very favorably to linear television, sports, even YouTube, TikTok, Facebook where we outperform most of those plumbers by at least two to one. So it's a really interesting comeback story, just as the movie theaters have come back, cinema advertising is coming back as well. Um, so we're excited about the future of this business. Um, the movie business has been under a lot of duress during COVID. Um, and we finally see their life back in the business this summer with Barbenheimer, which seems to have been quite the story for everyone. Yeah, I mean, look, it got me dressed up to go to the theaters, Tom. So that was a success, uh, success as well as just being able to see the movie and kind of participate in that. But then you think about what beyond Barbenheimer as well and the, the fanfare, the amount of foot traffic that's going into the theaters. How do you continue to sell to potential advertisers and marketers that the CPMs should still be that valuable moving out of a major wave of moviegoers like we've seen over the summer? Well, as we sell advertising, we lay a slate out for our brands and advertisers. You know, every month, every week, there's some movie and some demographic that's interesting to an advertiser. And what was interesting to Barbie might have been interesting, different to someone who was searching, you know, the Oppenheimer demographic. So as we lay out our schedule and right in the middle of the upfronts right now, which are looking actually pretty good, um, there's always a movie um, in any given flight. And our, typically our brands buy by the week. Um, and they can often buy all the movies in the theaters. They aren't just buying just Barbie and Oppenheimer. They're buying every screen in a multiplex. So we've never had an issue, honestly, attracting advertisers around the year. Obviously, there's peaks in the summer and there's peaks in the in the fall, um, November, December period. Um, but generally speaking, this is a business where we can always drive young people into the theater. And I think as brands keep searching and searching for young people, they can't find them on TV anymore. They often are unreliably found in digital platforms, but we know when they're in front of a 50 foot screen that they're gonna see our ad and it's gonna have a lot of impact. And most importantly, we have the ability to retarget them after they leave the theater, whether it's on their mobile phone or through a digital device. So we can really deliver end to end before, during and after the movie goer um, that is often so desirable by advertisers. So, and Tom, as you guys exit um, bankruptcy and, and amidst this restructuring, do you expect to sort of follow the wave of the return to the theater? In other words, did the did the restructuring have to do with the pandemic and people not being in theaters? And now, as you also pivot to programmatic and also bet on, you know, sustainable return to theater, that's the that's the sort of prospect here. Um, let me sort of cover all those questions at once. So Sorry. <laughs> there is a high correlation between um, admissions and box office and the way we deliver advertising. You see those results in advertising often later on because most advertising is bought in the upfront market and bought often a year ahead of time. So what's being sold in the marketplace today is often the futures market of advertising, which is anywhere from nine to 12 months from now. 
And then there's also, of course, of a scatter market, which was relatively weak sort of lately. So we look at our recovery story as being similar to what's happening on the exhibition side, whether it's at AMC or Cinemark or Regal or some of the big way public traded companies. But we tend to have a much better story in that our margin structure is, is, is significantly better than that. And the advertising business tends to be less volatile um, than the exhibition business. Um, and, you know, we're combining this with our digital platforms. We announced programmatic as being a new initiative for us to reach a whole nother type of advertiser. So we look at us as a recovery stock um, that many people haven't discovered yet. We officially emerged on Monday. We're one of the few, if you know, any companies on the NASDAQ with truly no debt. So we have the ability to reinvest in our company. Um, and this is a very high margin business that delivers, you know, 80% of its free cash flow into EBITDA. Um, historically has been a high performing stock. Obviously the capital structure was a problem for almost three years during COVID. Um, and now that that's behind us, we sort of look at this as another opportunity to take a really good ad product, high margin, interesting product for consumers and investors, um, and then reinvigorate it potentially with additional capital. With with that additional capital, uh, do you think that you'll need to tap even more kind of resources to, to increase the liquidity for the company and, and continue investing? I think the thing for us to do is, you know, we have to stabilize, obviously, our core business, which will require investing in our, diff our, our current infrastructure and current people set up. Um, but we are going to look to additionally invest in data and analytics, which we've invested a lot in over the last several years. Um, and we may start looking at other adjacent opportunities to reach cinema goers. Um, it's a very unusual captive audience to have somebody in a movie theater winning an ad. And that young demographic is obviously very appealing. If we can find um, related businesses um, or additional opportunities to sell to those same types of consumers, we would certainly do that. Um, we're in a really unique position to obviously reward investors based on our capital structure, our margins, and the potential to grow the business. Tom, we got to go. What What is the most compelling non-theater, non-cinema opportunity right now? I think I think probably digital out of home is. You know, we we are we are out and about all the time, going to movie theaters. Often those are in malls and places where we can deliver additional advertising to people coming and going. Hmm. Um, so I see that as an, a really an important adjacency. Um, so I appreciate all the time and effort, but I, I just want to leave everybody with, you know, get a chance, go to the movies this summer if you haven't gone. Um, it's a great experience. And uh, it was proven out in July with Barbie and Oppenheimer. I have gone. I have gone. And I got dressed up for the occasion, Tom. It was fun. It was really uh, It was fun. It was, you it was you forget how much fun it is because for two years in COVID, we never got to go. And it's great to be back in the theaters. Absolutely. Well, Tom, thanks for taking the time here with us today. Tom Lisinski, who is the National Cinemedia CEO. We appreciate you joining on Yahoo Finance here with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Certainly.